space. But I think that I would rather let them stay in order to open up that end market for our products. All right, we have to wrap on this. Uh, Freebird, a couple of weeks ago, you outlined the poss- the potential of famines caused by Putin's insane, ex- you know, war in Ukraine. That's not what I said, but sure. I, okay, I I'm, the framing, risk it, framing it the way I want, but you but, commented yeah. on the <laughs> possible <laughs> famine caused by <laughs> Putin's insane war. Again, not what I said, but sure, yeah. <laughs> well, let's go to famine before Sachs loses his mind about uh, Biden's quote of regime change, which I'll let you end on, so I actually get your victory lap. But um, somebody came for you and said, hey, listen, Freeberg basically doesn't know what he's talking about because commodity mar- markets are showing that India and other folks are going to step up and there's not going to be a problem with famine. So can you unpack that for us? Uh, I, I will tell you that um, we are already seeing a lot of scrambling happening um, for a redundancy in these commodity supply chains. And there's a couple of issues, um, which I highlighted before, I'll highlight again. Number one is just the ability to export. So while there may be product, commodity products sitting in these markets, getting them on ships out of Russia, out of Ukraine, even if sanctions and trade restrictions are lifted and make them available, is very difficult because a lot of the carriers are concerned about insurance and liability as they would be forced to go into a port and do a transaction with an entity that they're supposed to not do transactions with. So there's a lot of reasons why these ships are not going to port, not picking a product, and not bringing it to where it needs to go. Critical risk in Africa in the near term. So this is an acute problem with respect to transport. The next problem is with respect to planting. As of this week, and I'm going to put a couple of links in here, and these links, um, uh, uh, Nick, are not in order with respect to what I'll say. Um, but I'll, uh, you know, I'll kind of put a bunch of these things out here. But there is an expectation that we could see up to an 80% decline in planted acres in the Ukraine. And there's a bunch of really good anecdotes in this particular story about how farmers are scared about going out and planting because drones might blow them up. And I mean, look, you're in the middle of a war zone. You're not in a rush to go out and plant. And so there's a lot of planting that needs to happen in order for us to have, you know, the expectation of the supply coming out of the field in about six months. So that's kind of the second stage of the problem is a large export market for goods coming out of Ukraine and Russia might be, you know, might we might have a kind of significant reduction in inventory as the number of acres that are planted goes down. And then the third thing that I highlighted before, which is absolutely still very true, and I, I put some data in here that you can all look at, is related to the price of fertilizer. So fertilizer prices through the roof because nat gas has gone up, so ammonia prices have gone up. Potash exports are prohibited from Russia, so potash has gone up. And so as a result, we're seeing fertilizer prices shoot up. And in a lot of countries, what, I, what I've included here uh, in this uh, particular uh, link in the chat, and, and Nick on the YouTube, you can kind of put this on the screen, but there's a guy named Gary Schnitke. Gary is the ag economist. He's like the number one ag economist in the world. He's at University of Illinois. Everyone reads all his stuff in the industry. Um, this guy breaks everything down. Uh, to unit economics numbers helps people make decisions about what to plant when what the economics are. And he highlights the current economics for planting in Illinois. Illinois is the, you know, largest corn producing state in the US and a critical supplier uh, of uh, of our, you know, national kind of uh, food supply. And he points out that, you know, as of right now, um, you would have to invest in Illinois, uh, about $810 to have a $243 return on corn because the price of fertilizer has gone so high. So you invest $810, you expect to make a little over a thousand. And these um uh you know these uh these these are not assuming rent. The problem is when you factor in the cost of rent, the average rent in Illinois is $227. So a lot of farmers in Illinois rent their land, about half do. And so uh for a lot of farmers, it's actually uneconomical, not just in Illinois but around the world now, where the cost of the inputs, the cost of rent, the cost of production exceeds the expected profit coming out of the farm. And so far- farmers are not going to plant. And so, you know, we're seeing kind of a major issue with um, uh, with these farmers around the world kind of making planting decisions right now that are informed by upside down economics. This is being monitored, you know, fortunately, in the US, the USDA reported today, that it looks like the price of corn is such that a lot of farmers are going to go back and plant soybeans. And um, we're seeing uh, basically a historic planting rep- uh, survey coming out today that says farmers are in fact going to go out in the field, they are in fact going to plant. 
Um, but this is not true everywhere. We don't, we haven't done the calculus on it yet, but there is a ton of anecdotal support and a ton of survey data that's coming out showing that farmers aren't going to plant the acres that they normally would plant because costs are so high. That means there's going to be less production over the next year. That means famine hits us in a year. Um, that's a big problem. Sachs wants to know why they don't just use DoorDash or Uber Eats. He's to just order more food if they can't get This is not what's wheat. going through David's mind right now. David's David, mind is... David is honing in. He's like LeBron in the fourth quarter. <laughs> yes. There's, there's, you know, a, set a minute play. left. He's like, everybody get out of the way. Give get me out the out ball. Just ISO ball. He's going to do his ISO ball. He's about to play ISO ball. Clear out. Clear out. Three, All right, here we two, go. Three, two, one. David.